Hello and thanks for joining us on Press Party here at Suffolk University's Studio 73. I'm your host, Katie Eastman. A tragic story here in Boston this week. Two firefighters died while battling the flames of a nine alarm back bay fire. It's the biggest local story since the Boston bombings. The story of Ibrahim Todeshev, one of the Boston bombers friends shot and killed by the FBI, is shrouded in mystery. We'll talk about how tough it is to report when the FBI controls your sources and information. And it's that time of year when journalists nerd out over the state of the news media study. This year shows big expansions in digital only news organizations and interesting sources of advertising revenue. Don't miss our media fail of the week. I know you've all been wondering what Anthony Weiner is up to. This time, he's on the other side of the news. We'll get to those topics soon, but first, let's meet our panel. We have Dr. Bob Rosenthal, the Chair of Communication and Journalism here at Suffolk University, and Boston Herald multimedia journalist Erica Mora joins us, as well as Boston City Councilor Tito Jackson. On Wednesday afternoon, a deadly fire flew through brownstones in Back Bay. Nine fire stations and more than 150 firefighters responded. Lieutenant Edward J. Walsh and Michael R. Kennedy were two of them. They both lost their lives, saving others in this explosive and wind-fueled fire. Now, this is an incredibly tragic story. We were all watching with bated breath, hoping that these injured firefighters would be okay, and unfortunately, we lost two of them. Tito, you must have been following this very closely, talking with your other fellow city councilors. What was this like yesterday? Um, uh, you know, I, I, I heard about the fire, uh, but then um, I began to get word uh, that there were many injured and also um, several firefighters um, who were in injured. Um, it just makes, makes us reflect on the heroes who are among us, um, the men and women um, who put themselves in harm's way um, when we run away. They're the ones who are running to uh, those sites. Um, and I just want uh, to give uh, my best and uh, my community's best um, to uh, those families um, and also the families who put, uh, put their lives or their loved ones' lives um, in harm's way every single day. Um, it's sobering. Um, we all love fire firemen and many of us like myself wanted to be one uh, when I when I grew up um, but we also um, know that they um, oftentimes uh, put themselves in a, at, a, at a place where they could pay the ultimate cost and sadly uh, that happened yesterday. Yeah and I think for a lot of us as journalists watching another huge breaking news story unfold in downtown Boston was tough um, seeing all of those police officers and firefighters responding in a similar way that happened a year ago. Um, what was it like for you following this news and, and watching as it unfolded? Um, it was heartbreaking. Um, you know, it, there is this um, sort of perception that reporters must have a, a wall up and, and to a certain degree we do have to detach ourselves emotionally and sometimes some reporters do become desensitized but um, in in the past year the city has gone through so much so much healing uh, last year at the finish line there was so much going on that you couldn't help but become or feel like you became a part of a family with all of the emergency responders um, and I'm sure <coughs> everybody wishes them well but I think for for me as a reporter who has seen firemen and firefighters go in and run towards the bomb um, and sacrifice themselves knowing that there could be potential danger and trying to save lives like these these two men did. I mean, no one who lived in the apartment buildings died, right. or, or at least not yet, I should say, and hopefully they won't, but these two men did. Um, and it's just incredible and heartbreaking. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't help but become emotional yesterday. I think, uh, importantly, what the press does in this situation, especially with the, ph the photographers and videographers, is provide people with a real context to the situation. So we get to try, at least in a small way, to understand what these men and women who are our first responders, whether they be police, fire, medical, et cetera, are going through. I will say, um, from the press side of things, these these are difficult situations mm -hmm. because oh, yeah. they're all th everyone's calling you and no one right? wants to come and then is this all <laughs> this <laughs> all right. there's all of this stuff yeah. do you know anything is a confirmation or whatever mm -hmm. and, it, and it just for me in, in, in the role that I, I'm in it's a to me it's such a difficult situation so Normal. you were getting lots of calls yeah. yesterday just from people asking yeah. what you and mean, yeah. again th these are our, our heroes 
um, who lost their lives. I don't only, and I know you guys have to have to cover it, but I, I feel like being uh, the tip or whatever is just something um, that's not good in that, in that situation. But and, it, and it's the media frenzy that occurs, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. also, and I just, you know, we'll put that out there, that's mm -hmm. difficult yeah. uh, for me, that people are like, there's a kind of one-upsmanship one or womanship when it comes down uh, to this. And I know um, it puts people in, in my role um, in, in situations. You know, uh, we have folks, I have a friend who, um, uh, uh, Counselor Zakem, who was quoted by the AP as, as like breaking the news and com making confirmations. And I, when I talked to him, he said, I said, I said to them, I'm watching the TV just like you. Right. right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that makes it, that's really troubling um, yeah. that people want to jump um, to those, those conclusions. So I just will put that out. I and, think and that's a really good thing to just to tell the media, take a step back and just wait for official word to, to announce that these people have died. Don't you? You don't need to know mm -hmm. that right. who yeah. died right away, and and just wait until the families know, and because yeah. no one's gonna not know about yeah. this. They're not gonna hide this from you. Right. They just are doing it because they need to tell the families first and let the people who need yeah, to really tell the know families. First. But yeah. also, there's a tradition uh, when uh, the they waited until the uh, firefighters were able to go in and get the lieutenant's body, right. Lieutenant Walsh's body, and, and take him out for his last ride, uh, as they call it. And so they waited until that to have the presser. I think it's so interesting, too. Um, I, I completely agree with you that there's like this, this um, bite that the, the media has to get. But I think it's so interesting, because I saw it yesterday, too, that as soon as they get that confirmation, there's this feeling of somberness of going, mm. Oh no, like right. we, we just found out that information. I'm not saying, it happened yesterday, I'm not saying that it's happened yeah. always because I don't, I don't know, but. Yeah. Yeah. but. No, and, and I think the, the special, and I think the speculation piece is, is an issue. Right. The other issue here is that right. this is a body, a body of, of brothers and sisters. So the, uh, we all know a fire, someone who's a firefighter. We all know someone who mm -hmm. is, um, is, is an EMT, and we all know mm -hmm. someone who is mm -hmm. a, a police officer. So the other part about uh, partial information mm -hmm. is it gets everyone so charged, and mm -hmm. you know it gets everyone thinking about that person that, that they know or they're related to. And right. So that's, is it him? Is it her? Yeah. Who, who is it? With yeah. no answer. Yeah, yeah, With yeah. no answer. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, that's all the time we have for this segment. But up next... The story behind the man shot and killed in his own apartment while answering questions about the 2011 Waltham triple, triple murders. For about a year now, we've waited for the FBI report about the death of the alleged Boston bomber's friend, Ibrahim Todeshev. The FBI released it on Tuesday and concluded the agent who shot and killed Todeshev while questioning him about the Waltham triple murders acted in self-defense. There are still many unanswered questions and mysterious things that happened when reporters looked into this story. We did not simply rubber stamp what they gave us. That's why this took so long. Ibrahim Todeshev knew alleged Boston bomber Tamerlan Tsarnaev when they trained together in mixed martial arts in Massachusetts. He was killed last May in his Orlando, Florida apartment, but authorities were questioning him not about the bombings, but about his tie to a triple murder in Waltham in 2011 that Tamerlan is also suspected to be connected to. But last week, while he was being questioned again in Florida, something went very, very wrong. FBI officials say Todeshev admitted to the 2011 triple murders, but right before he signed a confession, he attacked the agent and local police. The agent killed him with seven bullets. There was five dead, deadly shots. Boston Herald's Peter Galzinis says the 500-page report still does nothing to lift the fog over this incident. Galzinis writes, missing from this report is any serious discussion about how or why it was that two law enforcement officers, plus another waiting outside, did not even try to subdue Todeshev with anything other than bullets. Here's Florida State Attorney Jeffrey Ashton. Everything that we have, uh, that we learned in the investigation would show an individual who has a great deal of tolerance of pain and would more or less um, uh, fight beyond it. 
Part of the fog around this story included the strange things that happened to Todeshev's friends who were interviewed. Freelance investigative reporter Susan Zalkine talked to three close friends of Todeshev. All were put in jail and deported to Russia, making more and more people connected to this story scared to say anything to the media. For Press Party, I'm Katie Eastman. Um, this is a really insane story, especially if you listen to uh, what Susan Zalkine, she's a freelance reporter and she was working for Boston Magazine doing this story and she talked, she, she was friends with one of the people that was killed in the Waltham murders and she talked to Todeshev's girlfriend, a few of his friends, all of them ended up either getting deported, or going to jail or getting deported. Mm -hmm. And just the way that this happened, it just all sounded very bizarre. And, and you listened to the story, what, did, what was your takeaway? Well, well, you know, listening to the story and reading all of the media coverage, um, this smells really bad. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's, n n the, okay, so the the guy, right, and, and I don't know if you saw now recently, now there's a picture of the, the letter that he wrote saying that he he killed uh, people. I don't know if you guys have seen this. Yeah, that's out, seen that's that. out in the media too, right? So that mm -hmm. he, and it has a couple of drops of blood on it, mm -hmm. on the edges, uh, and, and so, I don't get it. So the FBI doesn't come question you with with two people, right? So there's a bunch of people in, in that house. You're one guy, and you get shot seven times o over this. I think, um, and I and I would say from a media perspective, so, you know, since that's what we focus on, I think we gave we gave them a pass. Um, I right. think it because it's a sensitive issue because it was a, a part of the April fifteenth uh, bombing. I think I feel like we treated them with kid gloves. And I think there's so there's so many questions, and this nicely, neatly um, kind of sums it up. The other piece is how do we define drug dealer, right? The, the, when I think of drug dealer, I'm thinking of someone who's Miami Vice pushing weight. They were selling marijuana. Oh, so you're talking right? the Waltham, so the, uh, mm -hmm. the, the people Waltham, that were murdered the, in the yeah, Waltham triple and, and murder. And the Waltham triple murder yeah. component, mm -hmm. and I do have to self-disclose, mm -hmm. I went to high school um, with Ren, Rennie Tekken, and it's really sad. But again... And he was someone that was murdered, just to clarify. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, sadly, you know, you have not great coverage of that, that case, which is on us. Um, uh, and then also really poor coverage of asking the <coughs> questions about um, really what happened in that house right. with the FBI. But Dr. Bob, what do you do when you, everywhere you go to ask a question, you are just blocked? No one, the FBI won't say anything, the police won't say right. anything, and then the people you talk to get deported. Right, and, and, what are you and, to and do? if you put all of that together, it sounds very conspiratorial, doesn't it? It sounds, and, and it's ways. like, I I personally don't think it's a conspiracy, but it sounds like it, and you would think that the FBI would want to clear it up just to say this isn't this is what happened. You would think, I and, would hope. I, and I'm not one to buy into conspiracy theories, but I do think that what they may be covering up, because the FBI has covered up things in the past, what they may be covering up is the fact that they bungled a lot of this. See, I don't necessarily think that somebody was connected to somebody else, et cetera, but the fact of the matter is the the, the Waltham murders. Clearly, they stopped investigating after a couple of days. Mm -hmm. You don't generally do that, even at the local level, when you have two guys brutally murdered in this particular, so who cares if they were pushing And pot? people brought up Tamerlan Zarnayev's name. They said he was acting strange right. after the murders. They said that he laughed when they asked him about his mm -hmm. friends, his supposed friends that were killed and they never investigated him. So exactly. that's the question. If he was investigated, They then never went to the gym where this. these guys worked out yeah. together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These are sensitive issues. There was a bombing. There was right. loss of life. Right. There were several people who Anytime were hurt Anytime terrorism here. is involved, there's right. a lot right. of closed doors and you, yes. they don't say anything. But I think this is the job of, of the media to really um, uncover, and actually you really, it, 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 the media actually becomes an agent of safety for the people. Right. Exactly, and, and the, the problem is, 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 as journalists, you know that you get a lot of pushback, mm -hmm. you don't just get frozen out, you get people who actively try to make sure that you cannot do your job well, right. which is tell us what happened, tell the public what happened. And in this particular instance, the way they've done that is they've not just frozen you out, but in some instances there have been 
On this program, I made a comment critical of the FBI's handling of the, the Boston bombings last year in terms of they there's, didn't follow up. The, yeah, there's still and I a got a critical. phone call the day after the program premiered from a, a retired FBI agent critical of what I had said and wanting to explain to me what had all happened. So, you know, that's kind of scary that the FBI is sort of monitoring even what we say here now. Well, we do know we have more uh, more, more viewers. originally thought the FBI is of, watching press parties. The ghost of J. Edgar is alive and uh, well. All right. Well, thank you to everyone for weighing in. Now it's your turn. Tell us what you think about the FBI report. Are you still left with questions? Stay tuned for our next segment. Segment, the state of the news media this year. Thanks for joining us here at Studio 73. I'm your host, Katie Eastman. Thousands of new positions added to news organizations, that's not something we're used to hearing, but it's what the latest Pew Research report on news organizations shows for 2013. Erica Mora explains who is doing the hiring and more about the state of the media. For years, there's been a rumor journalism is dying, but a Pew Research Center study thinks otherwise. The study shows that 2013 showed a boost in journalism. And no, there wasn't an increase in the number of people actually getting the newspaper, but there was an increase in an online audience, primarily through social media. There was an increase in jobs, in digital journalism jobs, and there was even new openings for international reporters and brand new overseas bureaus. BuzzFeed and Mashable became big players in the digital world, and traditional newspapers dove deeper into multimedia reporting. Even digital advertising is beginning to see some gains. Digital journalism wasn't the only one to get a nudge in the positive direction. For the first time in five years, TV stations saw an increase in ratings. And there's been some shakeup in ownership. Both the Washington Post and Boston Globe became privately owned. It seems the state of the media is gaining momentum. Could it be a sign of big things to come? Obviously, I feel no pressure. For Press Party, I'm Erica Mora. Erica, you feel no pressure. That's yeah. good. But I do, I feel like you talked a lot about the good things that the report said. Yeah. The report said digital only is adding lots of new jobs. I think like 3,000 new jobs in the last half dozen years. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of jobs. Mm -hmm. um, but Particularly in the past few years. Yeah. It's, per, it's in the, like, particularly in the past few years. Yeah. I wanted to bring down your little high, just because I feel <laughs> like it wasn't all good bring news. Bring it down, bring we, it down. Yes, we're seeing those new jobs added, but we're still seeing a steady decline in jobs in the newspaper industry, where most of the original reporting is coming from. Mm -hmm. Newspaper digital only like Huffington Post and BuzzFeed right. they're gaining jobs but newspapers are still not gaining jobs. Yes you're right yeah. but the newspapers that have begun to make the transition uh, particularly right. the larger newspapers mm -hmm. are seeing jobs and actually within mm -hmm. the last year there have been about 5,000 jobs added in the field right. of journalism so and, and a lot of those like you said about 3,000 were electronic only mm -hmm. so what is happening is you're having the technology shift and the jobs are now beginning to shift and the main reason is advertising is still 85 percent of the money that you bring in within the industry and the advertisers are now much more willing to pay for online content as opposed to a full page ad in the Herald or something. Mm -hmm. And first off, go, go you ahead. got hired. So, so, <laughs> so, we both so, got hired. So, yeah, so let, let's actually, right. in the right. last few years. And they're multimedia right. journalists. For right. Herald right. Interactive, right. so mm -hmm. into the uh -huh. interactive so, side. So I believe newspaper. there's some yeah. good things. That, no, that, I, that I, have know, I just didn't want to no. be like it's all good because no, no, there's no, still no. some no. there's a lot of struggle. But, mm -hmm. but it's 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 the best state of the media study we've had right. in a few in years. In a long yes. time. So this indicates, and I've and I've argued this for a long time that people were so afraid of the change in journalism. It's a change. We've got to evolve. That mm -hmm. is human nature. Right. God forbid we stick to things of the past. I mean. The, the worst thing to do is say, well, we've always done it this way, so we're mm -hmm. gonna continue to do it this way. I think that HuffPo launched because they came at the right time. BuzzFeed launched because of those damn quizzes <laughs> that I take that? all the time. <laughs> no, <laughs> and there's time. But this is the State of the Media report said they have a Pulitzer Prize winning right. reporter exactly. working right. for BuzzFeed, so, so they're right. switching over. So I yes. think that the change is coming, and that's what this is projecting. Oh, the change is here. The change is, the change is coming, here. Not only in the reporting <laughs> yeah. side, but the change is also coming in the media purchasing side. There's right. a company that's a Boston company called Visible Measures, um, and they are right. uh, the, the Arbitron, or what's the other one, the mm -hmm. Nielsen Ratings, 
-hmm. of web web mm -hmm. uh, web video. So that's the mm -hmm. other aspect of this is that th the older folks who were buying this stuff mm -hmm. didn't know how to buy uh, mm -hmm. ads on the platforms that you actually right. use. Mm -hmm. It was easy, right. they had the same metrics as they as they did mm -hmm. uh, before, but you have folks like uh, this entrepreneur, Brian, Brian Shin, mm -hmm. who's a Boston person, who now has a company that has like 40, 50 million dollars of VC money in it, and they're actually scaling to be mm -hmm. able to deal with how to measure it and also how, how to purchase it. So that's another evolution right. in terms it, of the market that's Exactly, and forward. it happens every time there's a technological change. When television became really big in the early to mid 1950s, mm -hmm. the number of movie tickets went from 90 million sold per week to like 22 million sold per week. Right. So, and, and then, but the movie industry survived because it changed and it did some things right. to adapt to it. And that's the same thing that's happening now. Newspapers took a while to figure it out, right? They started to give away free content online thinking it would drive people to buy the newspaper and that's not the case. So what has happened is now we're beginning, the business model is beginning to work itself right. out. Mm -hmm. yep. oh. The oh, one yeah. part, though, that I actually think is is an issue, though, the thing I miss um, are the personalities. Mm. So when you look at new, news media now, mm -hmm. That's everyone is yeah. interchangeable. We've and talked I, about I just, this before, yeah, yeah right. saying like, and oh like, no, you Liz can just Walker, be replaced out for anyone. When Liz Walker, yeah. you know, was was on TV, yeah. you just like, that was she was part of her family. When it was a whole thing, and it was a whole big deal when Liz Walker had a baby. Mm -hmm. um, and it was like a family member, mm -hmm. Chet right? And, and, and Chet and Natalie. So yeah. there was that piece. I think the interchangeable aspects of it. Um, there's a little bit frust frustration there that I that I have because of the connection that you actually mm -hmm. have to the person. Right. So yes. that was interesting about TV. So the audience has grown for the first time in five years. In five mm -hmm. years, but there are fewer but stations. Fewer stations, right. and the the audience was all adults. You're, it wasn't growing at all with 18 to 25 year olds. And mm -hmm. right. I'm sorry, but adults, uh, that's going to be phased out. We need You need to grab the younger people. That's but, not going to help yeah, you. But, right. but, but also, I think, too, that for TV, that makes more sense because 18 to 25-year-olds, I know a lot of my friends don't own TVs. Right, so that's what I'm cable. saying is the problem. You're not, right, yeah. And they're not going to start buying them when they're 30. It's just going to... I think that they will. I think really? That, I think that they will. I think that it's going to be one of those things where it's a luxury, and as soon as they get a job, it's like, okay, now I can afford this. Oh, maybe. You maybe know what I mean? Like, like you upscale it's as, just as you start not to get... Able to afford. But the other piece right. of it is that the technology is also evol evolving. Right. So there's TVs right. that are Wi-Fi enabled, and so... Oh, yeah, everyone has their, the Roku box, the Apple box, right. the, and so that, that's the and, and that's yeah. the other question that we also put out there on the TV side, is a la carte gonna gonna happen, right? Mm -hmm. Is everything gonna have to be bundled where you get jacked right. by uh, jacked by Comcast? And we watch things when Boston. we want to watch them. We don't yeah. wait for prime right. time. We don't wait exactly. for the five right. o'clock news. Yeah. We skip exactly. through yeah. commercials. Well, and everything eventually is driven by the computer, right? So so that all of the content is on the small screen. You can then put it on your big screen. But eventually, that's where it's all going. It, you know, the, the the idea of our current. What we currently see as commercial television is going to be much, much different in the future, just the way newspapers have become much, much different and will continue to evolve. Now, will there still be newspapers? Yes, but I think there'll probably be fewer of them, but there will still be that kind of a technology. Will there still be commercial television and network television? Yes, but it's going to look a lot different than what it does right mm -hmm. now. All right, well, we've got a Make sure we still have time for our media fail. Now it's our viewers' turn. Keep the debate going by making a comment on our Press Party chat and use the Twitter hashtag Press Party. Up next, New Yorkers and the nation might be hearing a lot more from Anthony Weiner. Welcome back to Press Party. Politicians getting in on the news. We've seen it with Scott Brown and Newt Gingrich, and we're seeing it again, this time with the guy you can't talk about without laughing at. Anthony Weiner. Business Insider just signed him on as a monthly columnist and the former NYC mayoral candidate is in talks to get his own radio show. The BI Politics editor said we believe the unique combination of brashness and wonkiness that made Weiner one of last year's most memorable candidates and one of the most high profile advocates for health care reform during his time in Congress will make him a perfect fit for Business Insider. But really, can anyone forget the crotch shots? <laughs> Is that, are we ever going to get over that? I'm still getting your introduction there. I, wonky wiener. It's just, oh, oh, I'm no. just, just, I, 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 this is, I, I, obviously it's entertainment and that's fine. I just worry that somebody's going to think that this is actually news, you know, because that fine line well, gets no, crossed all the, the he time. He is, he's not 
they're not making fun of him when he's going to write this column. It's serious. He's going to be talking about health care and serious issues. Listen, so I need a job when I'm done, right? So don't don't blow this up for me, okay? So I need a job after after, after I retire. No, what I'm just kind kidding. of controversy <laughs> have you done know, to you blow just, it up? You need to. Yeah. Yes. That's that's the thing. You can do no, after, anything. After, after you, it doesn't yeah. matter. But, but so let's also, still get but, but recognition. Also, let's pull back though. Um, I would say if you go back and look at uh, Wiener on the floor. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. No, See, uh, on, you can't. You on, can't have a serious just, conversation. No, exactly. On, on, <laughs> on, on the house floor, um, he actually was amazing. Um, he some he gave some of the most impassioned uh, speeches that that I've seen, um, in, at least in, in in my lifetime. He's a really really smart guy. He's on he the is. issues. No, on, on the, the issues. issues. Really, really stupid. Which is why it's so and unfortunate, and, and we, it doesn't. You never want that person speaking for your party when no right. one respects but him. But he has lost. A, 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 why would you? Journalism is about credibility, yeah. right? This guy has lost right. all credit. We can't exactly. talk about his name without laughing at him. Exactly. Why would anybody give him a column other than publicity? It's not because they're interested in oh, his sure. insights. It's yeah. because they're interested in his name. Oh, I'm sure that's exactly people are going to write it because right. exactly. Oh, what, who's the f former governor of New York? Cuomo? No, the guy who got in trouble for... The, the, oh, the, oh, uh, oh, the, 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 he was blind. Spitzer. Yes. No, oh, Spitzer. Oh, oh yes. Spitzer. Right? Yeah. He's doing yeah. just fine. What is he? Is he doing stuff in the media? Yeah, he's doing media stuff. Of all, course, they all are. Uh, also, hmm. yeah, but he's been also dumped by a couple of places. Yeah. Also, I think you, you are right. There is a credibility issue re relative one to the party. It, it, do, it doesn't help. Why? Not, yeah. Why would at, you want this person all. speaking for your party? Um, but you know, I, I w would say, and I guess it's not the same thing. But you know, y'all have Sarah Palin, so. Um, who, I, who don't are, have I don't have Sarah. I was like, wait, I do. Okay, She's okay, not in my back okay, pocket. Okay. I don't know what you're talking about. But, but no, but, I, I, but, it goes and, both ways. In no way is this a Democratic thing or a Republican thing. Any politician who does not succeed as what they're doing in a politician is just going into the news and becoming a columnist and becoming a spokesperson. That seems to be right. what people, what they're doing. But the flip side of this is, let's look at Newt Gingrich. Right? He co-hosts his own show right. on right. CNN. And Newt Gingrich at the same time as he was persecuting Clinton was cheating on his wife. Right. Right. And so the question is, from a media perspective, can that can that person uh, be salvaged? Now, Newt probably, yeah, actually, he does do the Twitter thing. That's good. No, but he certain, didn't tweet pick or he didn't, whatever he did it not is called. Pick. But what, I, but what I'm saying is, so there's a there's an infidelity and propriety issue. Yeah. His, that, that for came, some reason, yeah. <clears throat> I think that that was an issue that came up during the debates and and probably helped destroy his right. presidential run during the debate. Justifiably but so. But you don't like look at him and just think of him as a joke as much as people think of Wiener as a right. joke. Right, right, right. He is, yeah, I mean, he got caught in infidelity and he did a nasty thing. Yeah. He, he yeah. dumped his wife while she's recovering from cancer. Right. I mean, you know. God, uh, yeah, and but but Wiener is has become a laughing stock. Right. There's a difference between being a jerk and then a difference between being somebody who ju you just can't take seriously. Like I can't no. I can't see Wiener. I can't read his columns and look past the fact of his Twitter handle. And and, and Carlos and, Danger. We haven't even talked about that. I, I know. Maybe exactly. that should be his pen name. And, and as what, a Democrat, I, I'm 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 appalled that this guy is still out there and in some ways the face for some people of our party. That's true. And, yeah. and, and that part of it is the, I wish it would, would go away, um, part of it. But I also, I also think, though, um, we also have to judge people, and it's, it's the same across the board. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's, this is mm -hmm. an issue of, of, of infidelity and impropriety. And Newt Gingrich, at, at this point, was actually running for president again yeah. after we already knew this. Yeah. And actually, for you know, uh, those who funded him, and he, he actually was able to get uh, some type of golden parachute to keep it going, mm -hmm. um, was a serious candidate um, and looked to be a serious candidate in the framing of uh, the, the... To the that point, Wiener ran again in New York for a mm -hmm. different office and had another interesting episode come up, right? And they had a series of press conferences and, you know, he had to drop, you know, it's gone. <laughs> all right, well, that's all the time we have today. Make media sure, fail. Media, media fail. fail. <laughs> Make sure to watch Press Party next week. For the Boston Herald and Suffolk University, I'm Katie Eastman.